Should be. The Apex Predator. Watch the fuck out, Undertaker. Bro, let me get a gram of your finest yeah, the white fuck? powder, bro. What the f Oh, dude, what the fuck, dude? That was oh, shit! What the hell, bro? I'm sorry, I got I got a little bit too aggressive. Can I please just get the gram? Oh, I, yeah, I got I, my money somewhere sure, around here. Sure. I mean, it's... it's, it's Call me, you can call me Grim Reef. You can call me Azul, the 400 year old vampire that appears to be 13. You can also call me Joe College, which is my stage name. Either are acceptable or none of them. It, it, it's okay. really up to you. Where did you get Joe College from? Joe College. So, like, um, if you look back at like these 50s interviews, I was watching these interviews with like uh, college students. Okay. And they would call like the jocks and like the preps, they would call them uh, Joe Colleges. And it's like the average Joe. So oh, I was okay. like, I was like, I'm going to be the Joe College of fucking rock music, you right. know? So I'm going to be like the ideal character, right. at least. Or so, that's that character. So the average Joe. Yeah, yeah. The average the average rocking Joe. Cool, but it's, it's just Joe College. And uh, he's a demon. He's kind of a demon that, uh, that possesses me, like, when I get on stage. And I do these little antics, too, when I get on stage where I will be like, contorting and stuff and it's like he's pulling like the puppet strings behind it it's it, it, oh. it goes in deep we can talk we can, we can go crazy about i want to get into that okay. in one moment okay well welcome back everybody i think this is episode 34 34 um yeah we appreciate everybody coming out but we're just gonna hop straight into this one really not intro so we're here with joe college and ian ian okay right so how are y'all doing today how, how are you feeling? How are I you can, feeling? I, I mean, I, I, I'm feeling great, but I'm going to be honest with you. I did have approximately two hours of sleep, which is always exciting. Um, but really, like, I was just playing Dark RP all night, like Gmod. You know okay. what I'm talking about? And so, I just can't stop. I, I, I told him this before you right. got here. So when uh, we use rock analogies, you might have to elaborate just a little bit. Because right. so um, in my generation or in our generation, I sort of fell under the, the umbrella of, like, hip-hop rap, right? Right, exactly. So I... Uh, like I said, when you say these things, you might have to elaborate just That's a little cool. bit. Keep me updated. That's you know cool. what I'm saying? But um, yeah, dude, I'm excited. I, uh, you know, as I'm getting older, I'm dibbling and dabbling in different types of music. Right. So to learn like the culture of uh, rock and stuff, it's it's interesting. You know no, what I'm saying? It's real? almost like a new world. It literally, you know it I mean? literally is. It's especially I, if you, were you one of the people that was listening to rap majorly in the beginning, yeah. and you're not really in, it's because I thought rock was literally all just that ACDC right. bullshit, like like back and black. Well, see, that's exactly sort of like when I was a kid, you right. know. And since I've been getting older, that was my impression. Like it was more of like the. Um, like you said, the ACDC, right. the raw, uh, you yeah, know exactly. what I mean? Um, ah! Yeah, exactly. And then, I can't, I'm not even going to do it. I'm sorry, <laughs> Axl Rose. Please don't assassinate me like you did to Kirk Cobain. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, yeah bro. Like was, I said, that was Courtney. <laughs> but like I said, it, it's fun to learn. Um, so I did have a question. So you, how old are you? I'm 22. 22 and you're 21, correct? 21. So um, like I said, this sort of fits into what I just said a moment ago. I sort of fell under the umbrella of you know, hip hop, rap, the mainstream, and right. it's been growing since we've been children, right? right? You all sort of went against the grain. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, absolutely. so what drew you to that? And not only drew you to it, but what really like, because everybody's drawn to different things, but what was it like? Yeah, this is what I like. This is what I'm going to, you know, sort of pursue. Like what? It was, it was, it was actually super weird. Um, I knew I wanted to do music. I did like shitty SoundCloud rap. When I was in like middle school and early high school, oh god, it sucked. It was so <laughs> bad. Like it was just like trap beats and like a lot of bitches, you know, for like the word. Yeah. Um, it just sucked. And uh, I was on the school bus one day, and a, a girl I was with uh, put a like a little earbud into my ear, and it was "Say It Ain't So" by Weezer. Okay. And that was like the pivotal moment where I was like, "Holy shit!" Wait, like, is that okay? It can uh, rock music can actually be good. Right. I was that, like, "Wait is, a minute." Is that the song that's like "Say It, it Ain't ain't so, so"? That's a good nah, song. Nah, nah. See, I know that song. Yeah. Dude. No, I mean it's it was it was crazy. So, like, so she planted a seed almost. She, yeah. It was it was it was it was sexual. Right. <laughs> it, was, it was sexual. <laughs> she was trying to uh, what's it called? Um, fuck, man. Yeah, exactly. Oh. She was trying to fuck, man. <laughs> <With> that, <laughs> she was trying to fuck, man. She said, "I, I know cool rock bands." <laughs> 
Oh, well. She's trying to seduce you. Yeah, exactly. On, on, on the high school bus. Exactly. Or middle school bus. Exactly. It worked. I was so bricked up. I had to, like, <laughs> put my backpack over my my private area. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. So, uh, so okay. You hear say it ain't so. What do you do after that? Are you like, oh, uh, this is interesting. Let me let me just see what it's all about. Or, you know, how do you keep... keep I, I, I basically... I, right after that, I was like, I got to learn how to play this song. I got to okay. learn how to play this song. So I got an acoustic guitar... And literally for like months, I'm I'm just playing that and like I'm like fuck man. So you're trying to learn the same song for? Yeah. Oh yeah. It took me for because that was like I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything going into that. All I knew was that I wanted to play that song. Right. And that was it. So, so. we're so uh, so let me ask you this: Were you trying to play that song for the girl, or were oh. you just trying in general to play that song? Yeah, definitely, definitely. 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 That was like the main purpose. But then, like, retrospectively looking back, like, I hate people like that that are, like, just trying to, like, get a girl's attention through music yeah. because I've had, like, band members, like, get kicked out for reasons like that. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah. I just, I, I should not have done that. It should have been but for me. Yeah, so how old were you at this time, though? What was that? How old were you at the time, though? Uh, That was, like, I was 16. 16? Yeah, I was 16. Man, when you're 16, you know, you're trying to you're trying to figure out your way. You're trying to you're trying to figure out what works with the women. You know what I mean? Oh, dear fuck, God, and, yes. and, you know, oh, I'm sure every God, young yes. guy, when you're 16, man, you don't even know what fucking works. And if you do, you, oh, you're wrong. You no, know what I mean? No. Like, that's the whole experience of growing up is learning. Well, not only just women, but people in general. You're just trying to figure out people. Yeah. My you know game I mean? was awful. My game was like... <laughs> Like people call it Riz now. That's like a that's like a new thing that's going. On. Yeah, people call it Riz now. My Riz was like uh, negative, like negative a huge number. Like I, I could not talk to people, and also like I was just like a scrawny boy. Yeah, and I, I mean I'm still pretty fucking skinny, but so like, you weren't a Riz god. Yeah, no, I just I just I just had no game. Like I just looked like I looked like Peter Parker with like 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 anemia. Like it was just <laughs> it was just bad. Like. Ugh. Okay, so let me ask you this. So you're, now. you're yeah, you're 22 now. How yeah. long has Grim Reap been a thing? How long have you been pushing the band? Grim Reap has been a thing for um, a year and a half now. We started in on 420 on 2021. That's so cool. almost two years now. But yeah. so yeah, about around around a year and a half. And um, this is the most successful project that I've been a part of. I've been in a couple other bands before this. Uh, and it was like friends and family that right. would show up to the shows, which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, someone's coming, but uh, this is like the first act where I've been able to go and like sell out venues and right, stuff exactly. like that. So, so, so uh, let me ask you this: You going um, from doing like friends and family shows? How does that feel for you? Like, oh, what uh, is that? Like, I can't even. I can't even imagine. I can't even like explain. The, oh yeah, let me make sure I'm on there. No, I can't even good. explain uh, the feeling. Like when we played uh, an Al's Bar show. Um, it was one of our first actual live shows, and the crowd there broke fire capacity because of the other band that was playing. Okay. With us. So, um, and, and having that feeling of like all of those people paying attention to you and like cheering for your songs and like acknowledging you as a musician, right? And then for so long having like nobody do nobody, that. Nobody, exactly. It was it was it was so pivotal, and it was something where it was like. Like what you were saying, like this is something that I want to do. This is something that like I feel a calling for yeah. because not it's not just me saying like, hey, you're gonna be all right. You're gonna make it. Right. It's other people that are like, hey, you they're, know what? You're gonna be all yeah, right. You yeah, might make it. Yeah, you yeah might, exactly. If you can fucking make more relevant songs. So it only added fuel to the fire, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. So, so let's get into Grim Reef in its beginning. So, okay. you, so it's you said twenty twenty. Is that all right, dude? Is that all right if we get into? Is it what's the thread level I right now? We're we good. We're good. We're, we're okay. rising. Yeah, we're, we're, good. we're about a one point five. Okay, we're good. We're good. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I mean, shit. He's our he's our guy. He 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 tells I me think. what I can talk about, what I can't talk about. I've gotten into a lot of trouble without without Ian over here. Hey, threat level's gonna rise the more beers he gets down. <laughs> oh, I got I got a backup. Right. <laughs> Shivers on too. Well, I got I got some tricks up my sleeve. It's all right. All right. <laughs> so okay, so you started Grim Reef when you were twenty, right? You said so. It's almost yes. been two. Years, oh, so twenty one. Twenty one. Okay, twenty one. So. What is that like for you at 21? You're trying to create this band. How do you even go about doing that? Like, what's your first steps? What's the first things that pop in your mind? Because I'm sure you I needed a damn drummer. Yeah, I needed a drummer for sure. That's that was the main thing. It was like, yeah, because like you know, like white stripes and stuff like that. You can do stuff with a guitarist and a drummer. I can play guitar. I can sing. I just needed a drummer. So the first right. step was find a drummer. And through the drummer, I found uh, all of my band. He knew everybody. Right. He knew he knew Wilson. Uh, which I think you know. I think you follow yeah, Wilson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Wilson, he knew John. He knew um, Nick. He knew every Jared, all that stuff. He knew everybody. Right. So, uh, what? 
what was the motivation like behind trying to start a band um especially like locally you know how how do you go about i know you got the you said you got the drummer right yeah, but yeah. how do you go about like building connections with these people is it more of just like a um you're just trying to find this person or are you trying to find people that fit your obviously you're trying to find people that fit your things but how do you figure that out because you it's know so hard. It, dude, it, is, it is it is literally so hard like like i said i'd been in a couple bands even before right. this and and i like just the shittiest members and it's nothing against um their playing skills even they just like weren't they just didn't want to do music for you a living didn't work w yeah. well together yeah they right. we didn't work we didn't work well together uh schedules never lined up and it's just like music is not something that they wanted to do as a career path it's something they wanted to do for fun like as a hobby yeah right and that and that that really is the difference is because like i, I love music it is fun for me too but i want to make it a career so i excuse me I go through the obstacles that I need to go through to make it a career or at least try to. Right. But if I don't have a team of people that are, are willing to do the same thing, it, it's holding me back. No, exactly. So, uh, and then another question I had for you, and I was thinking about this one before you even um, came on. Right. When you, uh, when you're getting these people, and especially since you're only 22 and, you know, the band, I think you're the oldest one in the band, right? Um, yeah, I actually, okay. yeah, I believe so. So yeah. if you being the oldest one in the band, how, uh, with you all being so young, what do you think you're going to have to do to keep this band alive? Because, you know, being 22, to keep a band alive forever, even some of the greatest bands ever through years have fallen through. So what do you do as, like, a leader to, you know, keep everybody intertwined, you know, keep everybody on the same page? What are those steps like? Re recently, um, it, it, is re it is so hard to keep a local band relevant and people mm -hmm. actually, like, wanting to... Uh, even slightly give a fuck or, or or care or anything like that and i think that the main thing that like has helped us stay like relevant and like the main thing that we do to try to communicate and and always try to be like in the public eye uh is just traveling one i mm -hmm. think that playing in other like scenes and going scene surfing if you've ever heard of that expression yeah. uh scene surfing is a really good way of exactly. people and uh, and yeah. introduce ourselves to, to new these news audiences exactly right, exactly and even people like that like we're, that are a mainly like a hip-hop crowd and that's the scene the the fact that they are even accepting like a rock band right you know to 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 kind of like be part of like what they they have going on yeah. i mean that's an honor so that, me, that's an honor by itself let me ask you this so when it comes to rap like being intertwined with rock do you think that that scene's only going to continue to grow or do you think it's sort of like a niche it, it it definitely started as a niche, but I unfor I mean I I hate to say it because I I really like the like like rock by itself. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm a huge fan of Nirvana and the Beatles and all of that kind of stuff. So, it like it definitely it definitely is gonna stay though. And and and, and me and Des were talking about this a while ago, but I think that eventually rock and rap are going to like completely intertwine yeah and you're gonna see uh the rappers take on the persona of rock stars and you can kind of already see yeah, that you happening you definitely can yeah, you can kind sure. of already see that happening because that's really what rock music was about it was about just saying like basically like fuck you to the man like we we, we do what we want to do and we don't like we don't take orders you're and, not following exactly. the, the normal way you're yeah. not like no you uh in a funny way of putting it like you, you're not gonna obey to just some stupid like yeah. Not anything in particular, but just yeah. you're just fucking. You're out. just you, exactly. Yeah, exactly. You. Unapologetically you're yourself. It's always been about exactly. Expression, right? Exactly. exactly. Okay. So let me let me get into this real quick. I wanna. Okay. Is the, is the threat level uh, low enough for me to get another cigarette or be cool here? Oh, funny you should ask. That, that goes right into my little surprise here. Let's see. Oh, it. is that right? I got a little something. Oh little something my! God. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy, this is gonna so be a fun keep one. Keep it classy. Is that right? Keep it classy. Okay, well, Kentucky. do we even have a torch or anything? How are we supposed oh, I to got, light I this? I got shit taken care of. Oh, he's got the whole shindig. Oh, yeah, true. So, so yeah, I, I should have. I, 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 I know I got like this like scruff all over my face. I should have shaved. I look like a mess. <laughs> so um, while he's over there preparing that, um, tell us a little about your friend. Okay, so, so what exactly does he do? What's his role? We okay. I tell this story to everybody, and it ah. makes sense. It makes sense that here we talk about it, right? Yeah, yeah, no. Okay. By all means, by it all makes means. sense. So, this is how, this is not how I met Ian. Me, me and Ian met at the Horse and Jockey because okay. we're, we're we're clubbers. We like to go out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, get out, get turned. Well, see, first like impressions of you, man. You're a character. I, I know you like to <laughs> get turned. Yeah, 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 no, it's it's fun. 
the horse and jockey is uh is it, it's definitely uh my favorite spot but so uh yeah uh where we really no you got thank you so much where uh when we we really bonded uh one night though and at that moment i knew that he had to constantly be next to me telling me what the threat level was okay and handing me cigarettes and stuff oh, like so that. he was like helping you out uh sort of like guiding you through your your night oh he literally got, am i am i allowed to talk about like like something I yeah, did in the man. past. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay, just just making sure, y'all. Not that anyone would know what that means, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we're good. Science problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe can has hear a right history now. of science problems, <laughs> and he has to take medication to take care of it. Yeah. Okay, take, exactly. take a little. Right. Exactly. Take that, Joe. Yeah. We uh we uh. So I was doing um. <clears throat> I do visual. Uh, I do visuals sometimes at gigs, at uh, okay. at EDM gigs and stuff like that. And I was doing it with this uh, this guy named Ru Lin. Have you ever heard of Ru Lin before? No, I have not. Uh, he's another musician that's in the area, and he does um, visuals, which is like they put up a backdrop while other musicians, Ooh. while other musicians are uh, performing. He's okay. he's going to die. That's a poison Wait, so, cigar, uh, by the way. So that's like um, do they have that? Because we went to a show at the Borough. That was uh, they had that stuff on the back, right? Yes, that's that's stuff. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, the yeah. stuff. Yeah, that was cool. That that was uh. And if y'all can pull up a video, yeah. If not yeah. then I'm just making a square. You guys can enjoy <laughs> that too. Hello. Uh, so what? Just funny question. What's yeah. your favorite place here to like perform? Like, what's your favorite crowd? The Burl. The Burl is my favorite place to perform. We have like this like weird like like cult following thing at the Burl where like we'll do an event there. We'll get a bunch of people to show out and. uh like we just go crazy. I've done like stage dives. There's been like oh, mosh gosh. pits and stuff like What's that. What's that feel like, man? Like all like literally people it's are so holding scary. you up. It's so scary. Like every time and I'll tell you I'll tell you I'll also tell you about a time where I ate shit and uh, nobody caught me. Oh, which was awesome. That was no. like it was like peak of my life right there. That's serious shit right there. Is it? Watch let's, out. Uh, let's taste it then. Let's taste it then. You just, you, you, you just like yeah. you you hold one nose and you just sniff yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what type of what type of gar is this? So Oh, what is, what kind what type of cigar is this? I I asked the we cigar. I, I, I don't know. Cigar. It's the illegal kind. I, I know a guy. I have a cigar guy, and he he told me that was the way to go. All right. Do I look cool, guys? <laughs> That's really all that matters at the He's end of the day. Right. Look at me. Really Smoking examine me. Do I look cool? cool? But cool people smoke. Exactly. But, oh, That's so, the best way I've ever heard it. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, so so anyway, it, it's it's terrifying. Uh, because you have no idea if anyone's actually going to catch you. You have no idea if anyone even cares enough about you to catch you to save your life. Right. So you're just like, you know, I hope they're feeling it, man. And and uh, every single time, like I try to signal people. Well, I like, feel like it's part of you right trying here, to. Right here, right here. Come on. And then I just start like sp- I like literally like, I sprint towards them. Like I don't even give them really much time. And and there's videos of it too. They're like I've you just done go. it. I've just done it a lot. Yeah. I just I just like because like in in my opinion, like if I'm standing in the crowd and there's a human body flying at me, I'm going I like there's there's one of two things running through my mind at that point. Right. And it's and it's I'm about to get really hurt, or this dude's about to get really hurt. So <laughs> so you have to just kind of like Gotta make a fight or flight. Either well, you gotta get the fuck out of there and put your arms up or something. I think it's also you being like you as a performer being able to feel the crowd. You know what True. I mean? True. Like, no, uh, exactly. Unfortunately, you've seen the people that can't feel the crowd yep. and oh. they fucking fall to the bottom, which is very Smacked unfortunate. Smacked the side of my head. Like, literally, I was like, let's do it, guys. Let's do it. And they were like, yeah. And, and they were all like, they had their hands up. I was like, oh, they, they won it. So I just ran right into them. And it was literally like Moses parting the Red Sea. Like, it, like they moved oh, so fast. Man. Like, they moved. <laughs> so fast out of the way and it was straight concrete on the floor like oh, this so, stuff oh right here oh my gosh so i'm and when you dive out you dive out like you dive out head first like my feet are on the ground so i'm yeah. like i'm like uh, parallel that's parallel, dolphin right? diving into concrete that's parallel is that vertical uh, this way horizontal it's parallel to the ground yeah, yeah. Parallel, parallel to the ground, ground exactly yeah. the ground is horizontal exactly yeah, that's so, what we need you here for Ian. yeah exactly exactly <laughs> exactly right, take care Don't worry about it. exactly so it's it's a uh, so I, I was i was horizontal jumping out and uh you know you start you start kind of like uh, diving like a missile, you know, right. and your head starts going to the ground. They all moved out the way. I just smacked my my collarbone, my face, and I had to get up. And I was like, "It's all good, guys. It's all good." So is that your <laughs> adrenaline saying part. you're all good, or are you actually? No, that was pure adrenaline. Yeah. Like if I was in if I was in my right mind, even slightly, I probably would have started crying. But that would have not have been very <laughs> very metal. So I, had to, Let me I ask wasn't you this. able to do that. <laughs> Let me ask you this, and. uh you said something that sort of hinted on what I'm about to ask just a few moments ago, but do you think that it, uh, okay, let me ask you this first. Do you perform, uh, under the influence? Sometimes. Yes. Okay. Not now, all the time. H- how do you feel about that? 
Um, when I it 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 depends on it depends on what what I'm on. If if I'm on, um, I I don't really like to perform when I smoke weed. Um, when I smoke. Uh, I just get really anxious. Yeah. I get like very anxious, and um, it doesn't help me like loosen up. Uh, right. Alcohol though, oh, alcohol I'm too confident. Yeah, alcohol yeah. I'm too confident, I'm, and then I start. And I'd you know, you jump see- in on this. Actually. Yeah, go yeah. ahead, because he he's been telling me that I need to chill out recently. Now, so. Okay, so this is a lot of people aren't going to tell you this. Okay, right, industry secrets. Um, now the difference between a good artist and a great artist. Good artists do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, keep going though, keep going though. Good artists do drugs, right? Yeah. Great artists know why they're taking the drug before they take it. Right. You have to, and this is actually, and I'll tell you where I got this this ideology from. Um, they used a shit ton of meth in World War II. Right. Meth was the shit in right. World War II, right? And do you mind getting just a tiny bit closer to the mic? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let's they get prepared... you in here, buddy. Let's get you in here. We'll yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah, uh, knows a lot of stuff. I'm they prepared. Face. They like prepared hardcore for there to be this major like meth um, addiction. When all the soldiers get back, they're like, "We're giving all these soldiers meth so they can fight in this war. It's gonna be crazy yeah. when they get back." It did not happen at all. Really, the rate of addiction to meth for returning soldiers was the same as people who had never gone to war. Really, and they figured out the reason why is it's a performance. lot of. A lot of habits have to do with environment. Right. right. Addiction has a lot to do with environment. Right. So if you if you're at your house sitting on your couch and you're doing meth, the next time you're at your you're in your house sitting on your couch, you're gonna want to do meth. But if you're doing meth in a combat zone, it's a fact. And you get home, there you go, buddy. You don't have any. You don't have any reason. Right. Like it's just. Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Well, I think it also. This just goes along with what you're saying. I think it's also just performance enhancing. Like, you know what I mean? I think that, um, you know, I really like how you said uh, good artists just take drugs. Yeah. Great artists know why they're taking the drugs, right? So um, a big part of that for me is like there is a time and a place for certain things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, Whether that be any type of – like you can say this about all drugs, right? (coughs) I think the important thing though is actually understanding why you're taking it because um, just to throw this in there – that's that's how I think about psychedelics. Like uh, some people, they take psychedelics just to get fucked up, exactly. right? Just I've never to, been that guy. Trip. Oh, yeah. so you've always been like, I have, I want to feel the have fucking, a spiritual. Like, yes, man. Okay, so okay. so uh, I'll get into that just a little bit. So it's like every time I go into a trip, I'm trying to achieve something, whether that be mentally or something I'm trying to deal with personally. Right. You know what I mean? And and I think that's a good way to approach it because if you don't do it that way it can end up actually hindering you. And that's why right. I think a lot of people, drugs end up fucking with them. You know what I mean? Because they don't really know why they're taking it. They're just trying to get fucked up. Or... They want to escape their pain. Yeah, exactly. It's and, an and... escapist method. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's better, uh, you know, there's, we can go into this just a little bit, but I think there's different ways to approach that. Like, uh, and I'll ask you this question. Do y'all think it's better for you to like sort of just stay tunnel vision and not worry about it? Or do you think you should approach it and then like deal with it then? When, when, when like, it comes to psychedelics, I, I, I when it comes to psychedelics, I think that you should, I think that you should go with the flow. But that's just my my that's yeah. my that's my that's my view on it. Every time I've done acid, like you said, I've done it for a reason. Like whether it's to write a song or to find out more about myself. And even the times that I haven't done it for a reason, uh, inevitably I find out more about yeah, myself. Exactly. I realized one time I was I was, uh, I was on acid and um, I was like looking at human beings. I think I was at a mall. I think I was at the Fayette Mall actually. <laughs> And I was like, wow, we're fucking animals, dude. Yeah. We're animals. Like, we're not, like, we're no different from, like, a deer or, like, a cat. Like, we're just, yeah. like, another animal. And, like, we've infested this planet. Like, like you know, like, wasp, like, like, wasp hives and yeah. all that stuff. Like, 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 we've, like, that was, those are basically houses. And it was just a weird, like, conclusion that I made that's, like, super, like, just, like, all, all, like somewhat insane, man. Yeah. Like, somewhat of an insane inc- conclusion. But I was like, I was like, we're animals. We've infested this planet. And that's something that I've been ignoring like this entire time because I've for so long I thought humans were like this godly like 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 created by God like yeah. like m- worthy I don't know just I, I don't know I, it, well I, I think just, there's two sides was, to that because uh, okay let me ask you this you do you it. think humans happen by chance or just do you think that there is something do you think there's like I mean, this is obviously like the question of life, yeah. right? But yeah, do you exactly. think questions just are here by chance? Oh, I know that answer. I got you. Right. I'm a 400 year old okay. vampire, dude. I, okay, I, I trust me. I know. No. <laughs> I think that. Uh, I think that 100. Um, 
I think that we, I, I'm agnostic, so I, I do believe that there is a higher power out there. I right. believe that you know it, it could be Jesus, it could be Siddhartha, it could be you know it, it could be whoever. Um, but at the same time, I realize that there is a higher power. I also don't really think that um, it really cares too much about us. You know, I could I could see it being more of a simulation. Um, a simulation than than um, an actual like caring God Father figure, you know. I don't really I don't really view it like that. Um, but the only reason I don't view it like that is because there's just like so much fucked up shit that happens, you know. Yeah. And and it's like how 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 could God be real if uh, if my grandfather can like die from cancer and all that stuff, you well, know? How can how can God be real? You know, I uh, so I, ha- I have a question for you that just goes along with this. Right. I um the other day I was thinking and I sort of had this like and let me let me say this I was sober when I had this like little little thought epiphany thing. Um I was thinking about DMT and ayahuasca yeah. and, and while I've never taken them I, I I've done a lot of like looking and listening to people that have um you know and have you, I'm sure you all have heard experiences of where people they about die yeah. or or they're in a life or death situation yeah. and they say they meet God. Yeah. Right. So your brain releases a level of DMT when you pass. Exactly. For like seven minutes, right? Uh, like I don't know the exact time. time. I don't know the exact time. But um, yeah, your brain releases DMT um, naturally. Sure. Yeah. And so in a way, I was thinking like, what if you about to die is your body releasing that DMT? You just didn't die. So that Ooh. is you. That is you yeah. seeing God. Because a lot of people that have experienced DMT or ayahuasca, these these very very yeah. strong hallucinogen, hallucinogens, they claim to see entities or beings yeah, true. or you know yeah. creatures. What yeah. like do you all think? What how do you feel about that? What do you? No, that's that 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 can definitely. I've 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 like talked to people that have done like ketamine and, and have done DMT, and they all or or even um what was that other uh, uh salvia or salvia or something like that? It was something like that, and they all say like the same thing that it's like a spiritual journey, and like usually there's some kind of deity that speaks to them, yeah, or like a spiritual like apparition that appears and all that kind of stuff. Right. And that's trippy to think about. Cause like what it, if if you are actually dying, and and the last you know like m- mental experience you have, oh shoot, the last mental experience you have is, is like Fucked a deity. Up, no, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. Who the, hey, go, go. Threat, level threat, red, level, threat level, threat level, threat level, red, dude. <laughs> Someone fucking call, dude. We might need a door perimeter that's check. A, that's here a, a security second. breach. Yeah, you know, that's, we that's don't know fuck. who that is. Yeah, exactly. It could is be that anybody. the FBI right now? It could be anybody. Do I need to get this guy out of here? It's because we're talking about this god shit, man. They know. Bro, bro, they're fucking listening. Yeah, they're, they're like, fucking... oh, these motherfuckers. They know about the DMT. <laughs> they know about the DMT god. Okay, so okay. I would love, I'd love to hop in here. Yeah, for a man, second, f- feel free. Um, Ian is way smarter than me. Every day. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this is one of my favorite. I, I don't really like argue about truth yeah. when it comes to this kind of stuff. But one of my favorite. What is the truth? Theories, the, the, yeah, truth is subjective. Who, who oh, exactly. knows? Like, there's no way to even like get into a real debate about the reality of it because but, yeah, we just have no. It's different data. for everyone. But uh, okay. one of my favorite like pop theories right now you heard about the idea that uh human sentience comes from mushrooms what the fuck i love what gnome told you that what ancient gnome told you that no 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 this is great so because they have these records of mushrooms in human culture in ancient times um they carried fire yeah with it like they would carry so we know the ancient humans like interacted with mushrooms yeah so one of the theories is that we were basically we were not like sentient as we know it we were sentient as in animals right and some dude was just eating mushrooms well have you ever heard of the stone date stone date theory yeah yeah, that's uh, essentially what i'm talking i don't know it that well so pretty much what you're saying is uh you know we were at one point just uh beings and um so psychedelics contribute to our intelligence right. yeah. they contribute to our path in in the world in evolution yeah right. in evolution um i'm a big believer in that actually um there's a book that's written and uh, i've i've talked about it multiple times on the podcast but it's called the dead Se- uh fuck no it's called um fuck dude it's like the magic mushroom in the in the ancient cross or or something along those lines i don't know why i think i've heard of that why so, have i heard of that so pretty <laughs> much uh there's there's this researcher that um I don't know his profession right. or or his uh, his accolades or anything, but he's uh, he's a researcher, right. and he uh, was pretty much tasked to decipher the Dead Sea Scrolls, which is the earliest writings of the Bible. Right. And so, pretty much after studying the Bible or the Dead Sea Scrolls for fucking years, years right. and years and years, his conclusion was pretty much that the Bible and you know this is obviously 
words of this guy. But, yeah, exactly. Um, he said that uh, it pretty much humans all all the Bible is is just misunderstandings of uh, mushrooms and like uh, mating rituals. In lack of better terms, yeah. that's, that's pretty much what I'm saying. Um, and that sort of goes along with the stone ape theory. I, and I pretty much was saying I'm definitely a subscriber to that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I definitely believe psychedelics could have contributed because, man, just consciousness and like how we as humans are um, a collective community. It Literally. really blows yeah. my mind. You know, well, the Enlightenment period. I mean, not only was there tea and caffeine introduced. But there's probably some kind of psychedelic at the exact same time. I yeah. mean, that's that that's gotta be that's gotta be the facts. There that was that was a whole that, I want to find out more about that actually. I want to look into that and see if during the Enlightenment period there was philosophers like using some kind of psychedelic right. because there's been psychedelics since literally the beginning of time. Yeah. Like even in ancient like uh Egypt and all that stuff, like weird ayahuasca type like concoctions and shit. So I, I love like basically any advancement in human history, yeah. you can somehow relate to either sex or drugs. It's amazing. It's it's you know that's okay, what we live for. That's why we're here. The crazy thing about what you just said, okay, so sex and drugs are ways to uh I don't feel like y'all need to finish that. That's like a, I've this gotten a, greened out. This is a, it's a bad, bad one. Sig. I can I can restart it. It's not a. Uh, so, sex and drugs are a way to um, be with community. If that makes sense, like because normal normally, well, obviously you don't have sex by yourself, and then drugs. That'd be awesome though. I mean, I don't even have to like try to flirt or get a girl or anything, dude. I can just no stay effort. at home all the time. <laughs> That'd be sick. But, who was that? Who was man, the guy? Who was only the guy? I was the guy a that single took out celled his organism. So things would be different. Himself. What? You know the guy. Oh, Marilyn Manson. Dude. Yeah, there you go. Dude, there you he go. really did. I, I, that's a fact. Marilyn Manson took out his own ribs so that he could perform fellatio on himself, which, man, if you've got the money to do it, do By it. By all means. By all means, suck your own penis as soon as you can. And it's... <laughs> And take it whichever way you want to. You know, you don't like you can be whatever orientation you want to be and do that. It's not weird. It's yourself. It's 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 the equivalent of masturbation. That's crazy. But uh, but anyway, anyway so, <laughs> total no, off topic. No, yeah, but sorry. what I, what I was saying is, so sex and drugs, they're they're like a way to be around people. They're a way to communicate and you know feel things. Yeah, feelings, of course. right? Yeah, of course. So um. Man, after you said the Marilyn Manson, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I just talked about that. Bro, like, it he happens. did do that, though. He Bro, actually did that. It happens, man. <laughs> so, it's a podcast, uh, goddamn it. Oh man, I, I love these, man. It's, we're just talking. You know what I'm saying? We're catching the vibe. <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, going for we'll, we'll we'll transition back to a little bit with Grim Reef. Right. No, man. Uh, I don't did care. I? Ta- did I? No, it's okay. Are you bleeding? Threat level, dude. Oh <laughs> Threat level. No, no, no. He, so you see your ticket. Yeah, that's, that's, that's he said the, okay. You're right. That's the payback for right. the phone, you know? Yeah, you know, yeah. You're right. <laughs> a warning shot. Right. Warning yeah, exactly. warning exactly. shots. All right, so uh, w- like I said, we'll pivot back to Grim Reef just a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. Yeah, so what uh, What do you think that you want to bring to the space? Where, where do you all think you're headed? What What are some of your goals? What are some things that you're trying to accomplish? You know, what? where are you going? Where are you trying to take this? Uh, I, we we want to take it to um, the, moon, the metaphorical course. top. Yeah. The metaphorical top, right. uh, which, which no one really knows what that means, especially now, you know, with people blowing up on TikTok and whatever it may be. Uh, I, I'd, I'd really like to create um, something much like, uh, do, are you aware of um, King Glizzard, the Lizard Wizard? Have you ever heard of of, of them? What a tongue twister! Yeah, I know, right? King Glizzard, the, the li- Lizard Wizard. Oh, they, they, they're like they're they're like they're like this extremely popular underground band, um, mm. and they have like somewhat of a cult following. They're able to sell out entire stadiums, oh, wow. but they're not a household name, right. and that's what I want because I don't want to walk into a grocery store and have like a bunch of people come up to me. Like, oh, let me get let, let me, me ask get you your this, autograph. Though. Yeah, go ahead. Is that a sacrifice of fame, though? That is absolutely, and 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 I feel like that's why a lot of celebrities end up killing themselves is because they totally lose their identities. They totally lose um, this like sense of themselves because right. it gets it gets completely taken away with them. Whether it's through contracts, whether it's through like media, whether it's through a character they've built. Even I, 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 I have caught myself recently. I had to literally lock myself in my house for a week okay. and stay off social media because there was a point not even that long ago like like two weeks ago where I was so enveloped in the character of Joe College that I was starting to affect my family right and and, and like my my sisters and my brothers they're like they 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 never saw they me they, it. they 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 noticed it because I was never around and I and and I would just blow off my 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 family I would blow off my close friends just so that I could chase 
this like what this character would be doing you know and and so i think it does come with the territory like if you are someone that like gets successful in music i think that a part of yourself dies when that happens well let me ask you this so with that being said though do you think that um do you think it's possible for Joe College and Jonah to be one, or do you think that they have to be separate? I I, I wish I wish that they could. I wish that they could um be the same thing, and and I feel like that would probably make me a lot better of a person just because. But I, I it's just not jo- Jonah, which is, is is myself, obviously. Jonah is just, you know, he's just he's just an anxious uh he's just an anxious kid. You know, I, I will always view myself as a kid. I will always view myself, um as not worthy, you know, but that's just my brain. Well, well, let me say this though. I think that, um, you know, as a, as a person, especially in today's world, I think it's good to have a little bit of kid in you. Right. I think it's important because, you know, if you lose that sense of like free, freeing right. feeling, or, you know, you lose that sense of just trying to learn like that something right. as a kid that everybody goes through is learning. Right. right? So I think no, that right. if you totally push away being a kid and you try to take on too much responsibility and ends up hindering yourself exactly. rather than giving into that like fun side of yeah. yourself. You and that's what, what I mean? that, that's what's happening. It, it, it wasn't fun anymore. I could, I could feel, I could feel within myself that I wasn't right. myself. And it, it was, it, it's the weirdest feeling. Um, it's just, it, and I, I don't want to go back to that place. I don't want to go back to that area. And I mean, I mean, Ian has seen me in the worst. Ian has seen me so like drugged out of my mind that I, I'm, I'm, literally grasping on to, to life Ian, to ian to yeah. ian so i'm not passing out right. on a fucking job that i'm doing yeah. and, and 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 that what why was i doing that so i could feel cool you know so i could so i could feel like i was this character that everyone else was viewing me right. as so i could live up to these expectations well let me ask you this so what did you do in your home for the week that you're off i just i just i just like nothing it was awesome mm-hmm. I did nothing, man. Well, so I did nothing. I I've been doing so much for weeks. I I, I just sat down. I just sat down and, and I relaxed. and I watched TV. Yeah. And I played Minecraft. Did it make man. You feel good? <laughs> yeah, it made me feel good. So so let me ask you this. It was good, man. I liked it a lot. Being an artist and now and I and I don't want to say it's a job. You right. know what I mean? Because right. I think that there's a gray area there. All I right. think there's a gray area there. But do you get enjoyment of just sitting and chilling and riffing anymore? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That that's so the, like, that's so the like, thing. Oh yeah. yeah. As I say, you you can't lose that because as soon as it becomes a job and where you don't enjoy it is when it actually ends up hurting everybody yeah. involved. Yeah. Not oh, yeah. only the people that are closely around you, but your fans, the people that listen to you. Exactly. As soon as it becomes a job and you don't enjoy it, that's when you're, that's when you lose what made you start this. Exactly. Dude, you know exactly. What I mean? And I, that's the internal struggle that I've been having is, for a while I was looking back and I'm going out and I'm going out and I'm partying every weekend. And 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 I'm getting so fucked up that 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 I don't even remember where I live. I don't remember my name. I don't. I don't. I literally. I, I literally don't remember anything. And and it was just like a, it was literally a pivotal moment because I was like, why am I doing this? Like this is not how it started. It started by just riffing, making music, you know, hanging out with the people that were like actually close to me. Right. And that's what like that's what led up to what I was doing. But I got so lost i got so carried lost away sauce. lost in the sauce literally yeah. i got so lost in the sauce and this expectation that people had of me that it just it it warped me it warped my brain um it and it, even still even now there's still re- residuals of that and i mean i'm going to uh mikey's like sp- after this to record and you know I'll probably put on that character again because yeah. that's what I do because that's my that's my flight or flight response because I'm I have anxiety I have like I have like very bad anxiety right and it probably doesn't seem like that like because because uh, well the, you're an outgoing person yeah. so yeah to the it's just person. weird it's like yeah. the Robin Williams type shit man so you gotta dude, watch me dude you know what's so crazy <laughs> you brought that up yeah I have been loving seeing his shit recently he's he he, he is, an is amazing hilarious character. he's hilarious not only is he hilarious but I I feel like there's not really many good souls out there he was a he was a good soul one. you could look in his eyes and you yeah. could see and you could see that he was a good person I really gotta say I mean. Oh, you're gonna tell I, me no, he's, no, he's a, he's no, a, no, he's a Joe, pedophile no, or something? No, 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 okay, no, no. totally, right. totally. I, I just don't, I just want to let the moment pass. I mean, Joe, and and I think any good artist will, uh, kind of rag on themselves a lot. I right. think Joe gives himself a lot of shit. But I gotta say, I mean, a couple weeks ago we were, uh, we we're at my place recording, just working on a song. Not right. nothing that's gonna get released. Yeah, we're just, just working we're just on jamming. something. I think. That was probably the best party I've had in a while. For I hope you'll agree. Like just, it was, it you. was a good time. It was, man. It was. So I think I, I mean, 
And I, I, I mean, there's plenty of things any good artist has to work on. I think Joe acknowledges that. But I just, I, Joe, I mean, I, I don't want you to I hate on yourself too much. I'm like, not, I'm not hating on my. It was, it was just a realization I had because I, I, I can real like that. That's the thing is that like I can, I can separate myself from, from myself, you know, and I can yeah. look, I can retrospectively yeah. look back on my actions and be like, is that me? Exactly. And, and there's a, and this is so, this is so like, like strange, but like there's a Coldplay lyric, uh, and it's a. Uh, it's a, uh, am I part of the cure or am I part of the disease? And like that, right. and, it, and that stuck with me and it, and it like with music is like, I don't want to be just one of those, like a, a, another one of those people that falls into the same track. Right. You know, I, I don't want to be part of the disease. I want to be a part of the cure. I want to know that I'm doing good. I want to feel good about what I'm doing. I don't want to feel like I, I've become someone else. Right. Exactly. You know? well, and this I just is, want, yeah. like, I'm just saying, I, I just want you to like, I want you to know that I, I see that in you. I see that person you, that's bro. like really that cares about the, 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 the that cares about the art, you know, <laughs> and uh, and really gives gives a lot to it. Thank that's you, cool, man. Just, thank yeah. you, cool. thank you, Ian. That's why you're here. Don't taste me, please. I want to I want to say this just just after yeah. what you've said. I think that's a big part. You know, we're all young here. But you know, true, we're, just as much as we think we're so grown, right? We're right. still figuring things out. Absolutely, like, we're still learning new things. We're still always evolving as humans. I think. Um, and I want your opinion on this. I think the most important thing, other obviously everybody's got their own path. Everybody's got their job. Right. Everybody's got all these things that have to do with society. But I think as humans, our best thing is being able to be in community. No, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Like, like that was a good moment, right? Yeah. You don't ever want to lose that. Right. No matter what height you get, no matter what low you get, you always want to have people around you. You always want to be able to feel love. You always want to be able to yeah. feel in the circle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's it, And, and what, you know what's crazy about that though? Is that, as beautiful as beautiful as as that is, and as and as much as you want to carry that around, when you're doing this certain kind of line of work, uh, any kind of entertainment line of work, you 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 want to surround yourself around these people, and these people will say, you know, they're, they're like, I'm your ride or die. You know, I'm here for you. Yeah, I I, I support you. But they're fucking fakes, man. And yeah. that is so discouraging. Well, you know, that is so discouraging. When the people that you trusted, when the people that said they had your back. The moment that they think the tides have turned, yep. they turn on you. That shows you. It, it 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 shows. Like I I there was a there was a period of time I didn't want to be around anybody. Yeah, I well, didn't want to be around anyone. So I think that see I've had moments like that though, but, and, and you know I always find myself trying to figure it out, man. You know mm -hmm. it's like yeah. sometimes, man, you need that s solidation, like you need that away from everything right. to figure yourself out, and that's exactly what you did exactly. over the week, right? Exactly. But I think that that's also part of the process. Like I think a part of the process in you figuring and learning things out is taking time to yourself, but also being in the mix. Right. I think that's you important. Like uh, we had a guest on last week, and one thing that we talked about was moderation. Right. I think there's greatness in moderation because you know, like I said, you got a foot in. Without it being a hindrance to yourself, like in too many ways, foot in, foot out type thing. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You always got to have two. There's always two sides to the book page. Right. Exactly. You, you know what I mean? And I'll go so far as to say even moderation in moderation. Yeah. Everything in moderation. Yes. And, and it's so important. And, you know, like I said, and, I, and I'll say it again, us being young, bro, we're trying to figure it out. And, you know, trying to go through these trials and errors is what makes you so and I've talked about this on the podcast multiple times. Right. No experience is bad unless you don't learn from it. Exactly. And I and I will say that forever right. because like a lot of people go through shit. Everybody goes through shit, right. but it's how you deal with the things that you go through that makes you a better person. Exactly. It's how you grow. It's how you literally learn from the situation. Exactly. And that that that, that I mean that, that that is that is beautiful. That 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 is beautiful because that that literally just shows that like that like no matter how hard things can are can you talk to the mic or buddy how, or how um oh yeah my bad no, you're good, you're uh, no good. matter how hard things are no matter um, what like how low you are in life then th that just shows that there's always a chance there's always a, an option to turn that around yeah and i exactly. think that I, I i that and that's beautiful because like you know, free will is beautiful. Oh, <laughs> free will, yeah. being able to do what the fuck you want is awesome. So if you decide, you know, like I, I'm in a shitty situation, uh, like I, I, I realize I need to turn this around. I it's realize up to I need you, to do though, exactly. To turn it around, yeah. And a lot, and a lot of people don't realize that. A lot of people are just waiting for somebody to come save them. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I was hanging out uh, with this uh, YouTuber named Dovey Doss. I don't know if you've ever heard of uh, Dovey no, Doss. I'm interested though. But uh, he's a he he's he's a he's like a little micro celebrity on yeah. uh, on YouTube. And uh, he told me because I was talking to him about music, and he was like, "It's like no one's coming to save you. Yeah. It's like no one's coming to save you. No one's no no one's like you're not gonna get this like mysterious email that's gonna 
offer you like a million dollars and yeah. take you out of a very sh- shitty situation. It's all you. Yeah, me and him talk about this a lot, man. Yeah. It's like uh, anything that you do or anything that you want, you have to put yourself at the at the front, the forefront. You are you, you are your own island, and you yeah, exactly. have to distribute. You you have to distribute yourself. No, exactly. And I think it's so important that, um, especially being a creator in any way, whether it be artist, like literally anything, right. you have to understand that like shit is not given to you and the people that get shit given to you there's 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 things that come with that right, right? can you ask it real quick yeah, I got you. um but there's things that come with like i know this is a cliche thing to say but nothing is free no, like if you get something for free <laughs> if you get you something for free you've already made it <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is in the flask this man's drinking gasoline <laughs> don't let don't let him fool you can i have some of that you gasoline i need to be fueled dude i've only had two hours of sleep dude there you go. Is, oh, that, man, is that is that a gas party again? Or a little is bit, it? A little bit. Okay, little okay. Bit. Oh, so, uh, okay. You, you, <laughs> <laughs> you talking about sleep, man, is always something I struggle with because I'm a night dweller. You mean too- Dude, it, it sucks. It's It sucks, but it's so beautiful. It's because so, at, we're vampires. It's okay. Night, you, get that, <laughs> it's all right. you get that time where you're like, you know, you're uh, away from everything. You have your own time, right? But also at the same time, you're sacrificing your fucking like almost well being doing that. Literally, like you're 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 literally making yourself become more depressed oh, because man. because sunlight sunlight literally like it it literally you know, gives you a what is the word um it starts with an S it's like serotonin man yeah. that's what it is yeah. dude yeah serotonin it literally gives you serotonin and um nighttime does not do that so yeah. like straight especially if you're already kind of depressed and you're living in the night. That sucks, man, yeah. and and that's what I really got to get out of. But I also like being alone, dude. I like being alone. That's what it's I'm weird. Like, it's a great it's area, weird. like moderation, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's good to fucking, it's good to have both. Yeah. And I heard something the other day. I, I can't remember if I heard this yesterday or today, but there's a guy that wrote a book, and he said that the mo- one of the most important things that you can do in your day is as soon as you wake up, get sunlight. Literally, I don't know where I heard this. No, no, uh, I, mean, I, heard, I remember that. Yeah. I think it's it was true. like a YouTube short or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, the most important thing you can do is when you wake up to go outside or at least yeah. like fucking see sunlight. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because that, it's just so important. Um, I've worked the night shift before at a job and that's, it's I'm difficult. Right it's difficult. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, Cause where you're going to work at night and then you fucking go home, you're tired. You sleep all day. Yeah. You sleep during the day. And man, uh, feed at night, sleep at day. I mean, it's, it's written in the book. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. written in, it's written it's, in the Holy book. It's crazy. Just the level of, I work night shift right now. And you can tell immediately going on to night shift that the difference in the the attitude of people. Oh yeah, 100%. like they're just miserable. Like well, the see, people I work with. Just, I uh, I don't know where you work, but this yeah. is at the factory. job. I, yeah, factory. Uh, so I've, I've like I said, I've worked a night shift, man, and um, I say this respectfully. I say this respectfully, but a lot of the people that do that, man, they don't even know what they're doing. No, they're just like they don't know obvious. what they've gotten themselves into. Mm-hmm. And, no. and like, I really don't believe that night shift is good for anyone. Oh, no. um, it's obviously, there's jobs that have no. to have that. Like, for instance, a, a fucking ER yeah. doctor. Yeah. You, you can't, you can't get out of that, right? But um, people, people are dying in like every any time of day. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, there's definitely jobs that you have to be working 24 hours around the clock. McDonald's, like, uh, like on God, if I don't get my like McChicken like at, at 3 a.m., <laughs> I'm burning hurt. that fucking building. To the hurt, ground. Joe but, yeah, you know, you know personally, <laughs> man. I one time, I don't, I don't mean to distract, but one time, uh, they put cheese on my hamburger, not McDonald's, but this other place in my town, and I was like sober or something because I got really mad, and I I took the hamburger uh, with the cheese on it. And I threw it at the window of of the establishment, yeah. and uh, and uh, they 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 came out and they were yelling at me, and they're like, "We're gonna call the cops." And I was just so mad. I was like, I was like, I said no cheese, and I felt like an asshole, dude. Like this, I I, I wish I was lying to you right now. I <laughs> wish I was so, like this is a, this is an unfortunate confession. Like I, uh, I'm sorry, um, Burger Barn. I'm sorry. <laughs> About that, I Wait, was where just are you really from? mad. Uh, so I live in the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, the closest city to me is Irvine, but that's about forty minutes from where I live. Oh, okay. I live literally, uh, in, like in. Did the you grow mountains. up there? No, um, my uncle died, and he left his house to me. Oh, so you have your own like place in, out there? Yeah, inherited. How, okay, let me ask you this: you being in this culture, how is that for you being separated? Oh, dude, I, 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 I that's what I love it. I love it because I get to become a ghost. Like I get to become the specter that like. Like I, I come in and I like observe and I like fuck shit up and I play a good ass show and, and de- exactly and then I leave and then everyone's like who the fuck was that guy and then yeah. I don't tell them I'm not gonna talk to him right exactly. like I, I want to play Minecraft or something <laughs> you know what I'm saying right. like, I'm doing my own things but um but it's it's it, it's awesome I, I think that's even better because if I was if I was constantly here I'd be 
I might, I, I might, I might honestly be dead if I lived here. Man, traffic's a bitch though. Yeah, <laughs> man, that fucking sucks. Uh, what is it? Forty-five minutes for you to get here? An hour? You no, said? it's an hour. It's an hour and thirty minutes for me to get here from where I live. Yeah. An hour and thirty minutes? Well, I appreciate you coming yeah. out, man. I oh, really I do. love it, man. This way, I'm here for it. You know, Fuck so yeah. I, I play shows here. I do a lot, so people don't realize that I actually care about everybody here until I come here. So uh, I have two more questions before we wrap it up, and these are more but, not related with Grim Reef, just more tour or. Kind of, but not really. Right. And I talked to you a little bit about this before the podcast. Yeah. Um, something that really sparked my interest recently. I'll ask this bland question first, and then I'll go into detail. Right. Well, how do you feel about AI? I think that. Ooh, okay, I'll go. You want to go first? <laughs> oh, I love this time. I, I'd be happy to go first. Oh, you go first. I'll, I'll go second. I'll go second. Oh my god! All right, so we've got all these people. I know exactly what you're talking about. You're talking about AI generated art. Yeah, it's the big talking point right now, and. My hot take on it that I haven't seen a lot of people talking about, I don't think people realize how much of the content that they consume is already AI generated. Give Very me an, give me some examples of like stuff that you wouldn't think is AI generated this is, compared this to This is my biggest complaint about the internet right now. Remember like five years ago, you used to be able to, you got a question, you go on Google, you type in the question and you get an answer. Yeah. Just plain, simple, easy, no more. Right. You type in. I, see if you've it noticed. It, that's all it was. It was the it was the bare minimum. It was just ask a question. Exactly. Get now you type in a question. What do you get? You get fifty articles. You got right. fucking Bloomberg, New York Post, all this shit. Washington Post. And then you read it. You read it, and it's if you if you've been in the kind of internet culture and the program, you realize it's not a person. A person has not written this article. Okay. It's actually AI generated. You can look this up. It is actually they type in the so keyword. The information that we're getting is already. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. That's a hundred percent. It's literally it's just they type in the keywords because they know it's called. Um, you can look this up. This is like a known thing that yeah. I do a little bit of uh, social media management, and like marketing management. It's um, hopefully I can remember the name of it. Uh, but basically what it is, there's an acronym for it, mm. but it's, you can look on Google and you can see statistics for what words you right. can use search engine optimization. That's okay. what it's called. Okay. So they will use specific words that are unrelated to the article so that it comes up right it on will, the top of the search. Right. Exactly. Even right. if it's not a relevant, even if it's not what you're looking for. So let me ask you this. Do you think that there's a, a ulterior motive to that? Money. Money. It's okay. just get the most clicks and it's, and and do the least amount of work while doing so. Exactly. Right. It's well, all profit. So so we'll go into like the the de the detailed part that I want to get into. Right. Yeah. When it comes to art and music, right. okay. do you think that um because like I saw somebody post about this the other day. There's already places that are getting rid of artists because now you can fucking put words into an engine yeah. and it will create your image. Yeah. Like Literally. for instance, yeah. uh, say you're creating an ad or a banner. Right. For for your concert, right. right? Where some where normally you'd have to go to like a a, a digital editor or somebody right. to make the flyer. Yeah. Now you can fucking have AI make that. Exactly. Do you think that that will end up coming into the music space? And if so, how would that affect? One, how will it affect the the authenticity of music? And yeah. also, how will it affect people that are in music? I think that I, it's 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 always going to be a negative effect once you take the human out of the art. You know, yeah. and I think that, that that's inevitable. Um, and a lot of artists has even hint, uh, has hinted towards that. ASAP Rocky released uh, a new song where in the music video, uh, he's literally killed and then turned into an AI robot, basically, mm -hmm. and then is still paraded around. The thing about, the thing about AI is that it's, it's constantly developing, so there's going to be a point where even, you know, if an AI can develop a picture, why can't in a couple of years AI develop a song? And uh, then if, an, if AI can develop a song, why are you paying millions of dollars to hire an artist? Let me ask you a fucking question. With that being said, do you think that there will ever be an AI created to be able to consume AI work? Oh, man. Because if so, if so, that almost creates a new species. It, 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 we are do you we, sort we're of literally, I mean, we're literally doing that. Like, like right now, right now, we, we are kind of at like a. A, a caveman aspect of uh, of AI where like maybe we can get some robots and we can be like hey how you doing and they can be like hey how are you doing right. you know what I'm saying but 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 we are doing so much work on it now where we are literally creating a new species once we can get them to be 
um, self um, self aware, then we're we we are fucked. Yeah, we are fucked. Once AI becomes self aware, that is uh, that's probably just going to be the end of the human race, honestly. Because AI, they're they're like any kind of robot, any kind of AI, they'll never get a disease. They'll never die of a gunshot. You know, they'll never die of these of these of these things that human beings are dying from every day. Cancer. I mean, I'll probably get that shit. Um, you like that's a, you you know like they they're 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 fucking immortal. Yeah. They're they're literally they're literally like. Well, you you just said something that sparked some interest. Go ahead. So. Obviously, I know cancer, like, isn't a fucking choice. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying this before I say what I'm about to say. Absolutely. But as a human, you make that uh, sacrifice. Right. You enjoy smoking. You enjoy yeah. doing these things that are uh, can cause cancer, Exactly, right? and you know they could. That, know that's they could. something, though, that, like, w- I'll say two things about Elon Musk and what I'm about to say. Right. That's one thing that Elon Musk is trying to do is create a way where, like, I don't want to say you can smoke and not get cancer, exactly. but create ways that you can sort of get around the human gene. Like, exactly. So we can sort of like uh, push out disease exactly. and, and those type of things. Exactly. But one thing I want to say about Elon Musk, and, and, and this quote was crazy when I heard it because right. it's so true. When humans make a road, we don't get mad at the anthill or no, the exactly. ants that are in the way. Exactly. We just make the road. Exactly. Right. What do you think? Do you think AI will sort of have that same thing so where, it's, exactly. where it's like they're not going to get mad at humans, but they're just going to keep progressing through us? So we're, yeah. we 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 have like we have like slightly more genetic code than like monkeys do, right? Right. We have like slightly more genetic code. So so if AI is slightly more genetically, uh, uh, or not even genetically, I guess literally just like manufac- manufacture manufacture. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever that word is, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. probably these y'all. Threat level, threat level, threat, <laughs> threat level, threat level, oh double God. red, threat yeah, level, double right. red. We gotta keep them tied don't to reality. Them, man. Don't taste me. Keep them tied to reality. It's all right. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, yeah, I'll, 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 I got a, I got a, I got a tagline for you, you right here. I love it. this. This is one of my favorite sayings. Humanity is birthing the next generation of sentience. It is that, and that's what AI is, dude. Like that. That's it's. It's literally. It's like literally that. gonna. It's literally gonna replace us. And, and, and like, I, a lot of people say that. I think. I, I like Elon. A lot of uh, Elon Musk is getting a lot of smoke right now. Uh-huh. I fuck with Elon Musk. Me I think too. that he's a, a lot very people... smart guy. I think he's a very yeah. very smart guy. I think that he knows a lot of shit that we don't know. And I think that it's just very. It's very. It's very small minded just to just to put him on a political side and be like I don't fuck with him because no like, I agree I'm, I'm a fan of Elon though yeah so. like uh, I, I separate separate the the person from what they've actually done right you know exactly and, and he's and he uh, Elon Musk has done a lot of amazing yeah. amazing amazing things so it, although he's getting a lot of uh, smoke right now like, well, let me ask you this bullshit, or you you, you, you I, looks like you got I something might, I got yeah. something I actually yeah, he's, really he's wanted to waiting. talk he's about, about to knock me out I, so talk no, no. This is like Shut the one the thing up. I came on this podcast. I wanted to talk about this. Right, this is one of the. This is yeah, one we'll thing that I'll, as long as you want. I don't want to give you all the time frame or anything. We probably we'll got wait. about ten minutes. Okay, sounds minutes. good. If if we can, yeah, let's I, this do it. Let's is, do it. This is one of my favorite topics. This is the number one. We were talking about this before the podcast. We we're talking about uh, the gestures, privilege, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But the thing that really, like the the pinpoint that I really want to talk about. The next generation of influencers and entertainers, this is my advice to you. Right. Separate your brand from social media. Okay. Because... I mean, that's different though. Why though, dude? Because the social media is like where everybody gets no. found. Well, so well, why well, let, me this, let me say this. Let me say this. I'll just add my yeah, two yeah, cents. Yeah. There's two things I want to say to that. Yeah. You saying that though, as a as a small artist, how are you able to reach masses that way? Because exactly. you hard, you man. as a small individual, one yeah. person, it makes it like, uh, for instance, I can have a brand blow up and have a thousand people that are willing to buy a product, or a thousand people that are willing to you know support my brand or label right. or whatever the case may be. Yeah. A thousand people within days. Exactly. You to actually as a person go out and one-on-one or whether it's this person gives this shirt to this person and this person this word of mouth is better i agree word of mouth is better but when there's a there's a moderation in a gray area in there where it's like you have to to be able to grow to the point as a entrepreneur and as a young artist to be able to get where you're trying to go social media helps but then there's also a part where like that word of mouth and authenticity is better this is what i'm gonna this is what I'm. This is kind of what I'm getting at, and yeah. I think you, on some level, you understand this, and I, I hope that this will come across. Is basically what I'm saying is anything that you say, yeah. 
and let me let me kind of preemptively say like social media is great for connecting with other artists yeah for networking for even for communication like i need to set up a show with somebody i want to invite people to my show right. i want to advertise a show all great but when i say separate your brand from social media your brand is kind of when i say brand i mean like your reputation right yeah. your values what people think about I you as you a person right yeah. And a lot of people go on social media and they'll say things about what they believe in. And if you really believe in a cause or something, that's fine. But they'll comment on current events. Yeah. And the problem with that is people will go on to social media. They will read your post and they may read it two years from now, three years right. from now, five years from and now. it's not applicable anymore. No, it's exactly. not applicable, but to them, it happened today. Right. It happens when right. the user, when the when the consumer reads it, right, exactly. is when you said it, is when they get and that it'll be judged in the context. But let me say of this: that. is that exactly. so? Is that a problem within the consumer not looking at the timestamp though? Is that is that a problem from consumers, or is that more along the lines of the fault of you? See what I'm saying? I think like, yeah, I I, like, I, I I could see both ways. I feel like I feel like the consumer the consumer is at fault that's a their lot responsibility of responsibility because to, because they a lot of consumers a lot of people that are witnessing things they do not actually want to look into the situation they, they don't want to, to look into the context they want to read something and automatically believe that what they're reading online. Is is facts, right? And 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 that happens so much. People won't look into the context. People won't dive into the subject, and then they want to go around and talk about it like they right. know something. Exactly. But they can't even tell me what happened in order up to get to that point. Well, okay. Let me I'll also ask... say this, just real quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, because I found myself doing that before. Exactly. No, it's, it's hard. It's like human, it's, it's human nature. Yeah, we exactly. want to, be, we want to believe what people are telling us. Well, not only that, it's like, uh, man, there's so there's fucking, uh. Your access to so many different walks right. of life and so many theories, so many brands, so right. many ways of thinking. So like there, there's everything. Right. I mean, I mean, bro, you now have the ability to access almost anything you want. Yeah, literally. At what point is it like I don't even know how to articulate this, but at go what for, point is it, it a, like or as a person? Do you have to look into everything deep? Because that can actually end up hurting yourself more. It, it's so hard to. It's, you it, get what I'm no saying? One, it's like, and like no one even cares enough to do that. Yeah. You know, like why the like why the like I, if I hear something about like you know about all that Balenciaga shit that yeah. happened and all that stuff, it's like okay, like that 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 did happen, but half of the population doesn't even care enough to actually look into right. it. Right. You know, and and and, and that's kind of that's kind of terrifying. It's yeah. kind of terrifying, but at the same time, it's understandable. Well, I don't I have say, that time. With I don't you have saying that time. it's responsible. Uh, or uh, it's reasonable. Yeah. I don't think everybody can. You right, know what I mean, I think everybody, that's also like everybody is an individual in the sense like, man, if I don't care about Valencia, I don't have to. Exactly. But yeah. but it's not my responsibility to care. Exactly. Right? So there's, it's. I think what we're going around is like a big gray area. of, And you said this before the podcast even yeah. started. When it comes to social media in general, there is just a big gray area where it's like, this is okay. This isn't okay. Right. That's that's yeah. okay. That's not okay. You know what I mean? It's it's hard to articulate your way around this. Exactly. Yeah. No, and really, what I'm getting at is removing like responsibility and fault. Removing all that for a moment. Just think of your brand. Like it doesn't matter whose yeah. fault it is. If it was my fault. If it was the the reader's fault for not understanding. My reputation is what's at stake. Exactly. No, exactly. The reader's reputation is not at stake. Exactly. So they're just basically observing. what I'm they're saying is they're like they're like fucking like. They're yeah, like, they're like Colosseum like like members. Exactly, you know, that's exactly what it's exactly. it's literally the Roman Colosseum. Exactly, right. it doesn't matter what actually happened; it matters what people thought about it. Exactly. So what I'm saying is, by all means, utilize that dude was so alpha when he killed that lion. <laughs> <laughs> utilize social media as a tool, but if you actually want to build your reputation, especially to your peers, do it in person. Right. Real shit. No real shit. Every no, time. I agree. Because. That's the context, because about you, what you said in person will be contextualized when you said it. Exactly. What you say online will be contextualized when people read it. Exactly. Yeah. And it could be forever away from the situation. It could have nothing to do with the situation. Because it could be word. It could be like rumor type shit. Yeah. And I, you know, you think you think after high school, it's like. Oh, man. <laughs> You high know, school never ends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and that's what's ends. crazy about it. That's one thing that y'all can take away from this is high school never ends. If you think you're going to get out of that purgatory, nope, you just evolved to hell. So welcome, everybody. I'll welcome you with open hands.